Hi, this is Kevin with Matt Practical. This morning I just want to talk to you a little bit about how I deal with color in Adobe Illustrator uh, for cartography specifically. Um, so here we are in Illustrator. We've got a little test document, some grayscale shader relief, and some different polygons of color. Um, whenever you click on an object in this color window, obviously it shows up uh, as the, uh, the fill or if you had the stroke selected. So it's important to always have the right thing on top. Um, but if we were to go back to just like the standard colors of black and white, I'm going to have zero stroke. Here's the white. Right now we're in CMYK, and you can see it's just zeros all the way down the board. Now, how would I choose a color? Yeah, I, I could do the sliders, but that's pretty tricky until you get a little advanced. Um, so that's that's all, you know, cyan right there, 40%, and you get this light blue. Well, maybe that's a color that you like. Um, and you want to build off of that. So a lot of times what I would do is I'd go up here and I'd grab the color guide and let me drag it down where we can see it. So the color guide helps you choose colors that work because they're related on the color wheel. Um, if you take a look under the hamburger button down here, uh, oh, excuse me, I'm sorry, the drop down button here, you'll see all the different harmony rules. So you could do a complementary, a split complementary, so on and so forth. Um, it's always built off of that initial color. So it's that light blue that we started with. Uh, sometimes I like to go down to look at the compounds or the high contrast. This compound one looks pretty good. So when I choose that, the colors right up the middle represent the colors that are built on that harmony rule based off of your base. Um, if you liked all of those colors, you would simply go up to this drop down here and say save color as swatches and it would go ahead and save them. You could also do it from down here and say make a new color group and you'll see that it shows up now on my swatch panel. So there we go, we've got our whole swatch panel. Now if you don't want to just choose the color from sliders, uh, you could always add some swatches. I think I've shown this in a previous video, but if we go to the swatch libraries, there's tons of predefined and there's a nature one with landscapes or the earth tone. What about the earth tones here? I'll bring those over. Um, yeah, so I've got this little uh, group down here. I kind of like that one. If I just double click on that, it shows up now. So now I have a group and let's say I want to build everything off of this cool red right here. All right. And now we can make some changes inside the color guide. Oops, actually from this drop down here. And there's maybe two saturated, but you could always go into here. There we go. Now, if I want it to be lighter, so I didn't, uh, I didn't want the uber saturated colors, I could come over. So tints are adding some white to it. Shades are adding some gray to it. And so I could go two over and grab them all two tints down and just hold down the shift and grab all these guys and then make a new color group out of those. All right, so there's a, a number of different ways you could play with it. Um, another little trick that I like to do is to grab colors from out in the real world. So let me bring this website over. So this is Adobe's color uh, website. It, it works really well, but it has a couple limitations. So obviously you can see we're here on the color wheel and the C in the middle is the base color. And we can uh, change that to a monochromatic or a triad. All these are the different harmony rules again. And you can actually move the base color to anywhere you want um, and then get yourself, uh, you know, into more different uh, rules. Now, if you wanted to put these into Illustrator, you could grab the RGB values, or it even has CMYK, or maybe it's just lab, yeah. So RGB values there, um, you could grab all of those, or you could just copy this hex code. Uh, but a lot of times, you don't know where to start. You could always take a look at, um, at uh, the different uh, you know, libraries that people have in here. But Adobe will allow you actually to put a file in here and pull colors and make a palette from it. Now Adobe, of course, lets you sign in, and what they want you to do is just use their entire system. So you would be signed in to Adobe Color, and then you would be able to save to a library, and you'd be able to open that library in Illustrator. That works okay if you're at home with one install and one sign-in, but in the academic sense, it's, it's very difficult. I've had a lot of hard times uh, getting the, the data out of my library. Um, but anyhow, so what if I went over and just did an old map search inside of Google, went to the image, and I went down and uh, grabbed this one. Okay, that's kind of a nice little map right there with some nice color. Uh, unfortunately, Adobe doesn't allow you to actually just put the URL in, so you've got to download the image. So I'm going to say Save Image As, I'm going to put it on my desktop. What's this? This is, you know, old Oz. I think it's an old Australia map. Um, oh, going to get an O on there. And we'll save that guy there, and I'll go ahead and pull that out. And now we can drag and drop or select a file. We can go to 
desktops and try and find that old Oz map. There it is. And boom, it automatically makes a color for you. Um, and you can tell it I want it to be bright uh, or back to colorful or muted or whatever have you. If you don't like the placement of some of the colors, actually this isn't too bad, but maybe I want it a little bit deeper green, you can move the individual colors yourself. So I could try and find a little darker green. Okay, there we go. Now the, if you were signed in, you could save this to your library and then you could even download it. I believe it's an ASE, which is a specific file you can open in Esri. Or you can just do it one at a time by grabbing these little hex codes. So if you click on it, see it was copied to the clipboard. Uh, now we could go over to Illustrator and we could paste it in. So when you're in CMYK, you don't have the hex code. Now this document is CMYK because I'm designing but I can change this to RGB and the document is still in CMYK and then I can paste in that hex code and there we go so we've got that green color and if I like it now I can turn it into a swatch a new swatch and this might be named something like um, Adobe Green or it's actually Old Oz Green isn't it and then you have a swatch and it added it right up here. And if you wanted to make it into a group, once you get two of them, then you can group them into a folder. But that takes some time, right? So let me see if I can find that again. Um, the other way that we can go is uh, another website that I'm a little bit uh, happier with right now. And that is this guy right here, which is coolers. If you open the generator in coolers, it gives you automatically uh, some colors right there. Uh, if you do the little camera up here, create from a photo, and you can upload the photo just like you could in Adobe, or you can put the URL. So if we go back to the old maps, and I right click, and I say uh, copy image address, and then back to coolers, and just go to the URL and paste that in, say OK. It'll think about it, and there we go. So now it's made, um, you know, the palette based on the base color of this. And then you can also tell it which places to pull individual colors by clicking on it. The other limitation back on the Adobe side is you can only get five colors out of your palette. Well, when I design, I usually want more. Nice thing about this guy is you can generate up to ten colors, which is kind of nice. And then you can randomly choose the base start color. Or like I said before, you can actually choose each individual one and tell it where you want it on the actual image. Let me get some pinks in there if I can. There we go. So on and so forth. And then you can go to Next. And then I would say open it in Generator, and I'll show you why. So if I open it in the Generator, here's that total palette. Those are the hex codes where I could copy and paste those in. But there's an easier way. But first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take a look at Adjust Palette here. And uh, let's just say I wanted this to be a little bit more saturated. Now, if I know I'm going to be using transparencies in Illustrator, I'll start out with uh, more saturated colors. Uh, if I know that I'm just going to go direct with full colors, I might stick with the less saturated. You can also mess with the brightness. Um, and so you could even change the temperature, which totally changes the entire palette. So something like that is kind of nice right there. And then you can apply it. Now, if I want to get this into Illustrator, the easiest thing to do is to export and then go to SVG and that stands for a standard vector graphic. This ASE is supposed to go right into Illustrator. You should be able to open that, but I just have better luck with the SVG. So I'm going to do that. And I'm just going to drop it on my desktop for now. So there we go. And let's go ahead and move this out of the way. And now I'm in Illustrator. I'm going to go to File, Open, and I'm going to go find that SVG. Let's see, there it is, Palette and that standard vector graphic comes right in. Uh, there's a couple things in the layer. There's a couple pieces of type. That's these guys down here on the bottom of it. Uh, I'm just going to lock those two. I'm going to drag a selection. Now I've got all my swatches. Control C. I'm going to go back over to my original document and file place. Or actually, I don't even need to do that. I can just Control V and place it. It's a little bit large, but we can change that. Um, hold down my shift so everything stays nice and symmetrical and so now I have all of these colors already inside of Illustrator I can select them all and then uh, I can actually uh, let's see where was it new color group so once I've got them all selected on screen I go to my swatch drop down and say new color group and call this anything we want this is 
Old Oz, that's the whole entire group from selected artwork, and voila. Now we have all of those colors instantly in a color group that I can start designing with. And of course, once you have the colors, you no longer need these guys, so I can literally get rid of that layer. Just delete that. And now I can change up and use any of the colors in my, um, my palette that I generated from a picture. Now that inspiration can be anything. It could be a landscape shot, it can be an old map, it could be a sign you found in the street, it might even be the patina on, a, on an old worn bridge or something. And so, you know, you can find inspiration out there in nature that will help you use natural looking colors on your maps. And of course, once you've got all these swatches, you can use the color guide to build even more. It's much better to build them in this way than just to pick random colors. Uh, what I find is that uh, the colors don't blend well, they're not harmonious, and then that changes the whole attitude of the map. So uh, that's a little tutorial on colors. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, please like and subscribe. We'll see you next time.